to yet another impressive. week of the amateur dota 2 league season 31 Ice Path Land is we're here tonight in the playoffs the first week in, of the playoffs and, and as always save. i am following oh, the contender league but so not alive. like down always goes, tusk, i am goes, not save. we're not gonna oh, have a game so of pot of envy you know i always like that? follow pot what, of envy what them up there? their game is not going to be until tomorrow they got, so they i get to follow my other first favorite player i don't want to say he's my second favorite player but or first favorite player that'd be kind of mean but he definitely i love to watch him play well this is fred and the GOAT5, I know I casted them in like week one or two when it was Green Reavers versus GOAT5. Had a lot of fun that time. Tonight we'll just be Fred with the GOAT5 versus Lost Generation. Should be pretty fun. And the that week is finally looking down. better, Icarus. so I'm, I'm excited. I and hope you have some fun. We've got some replays in the background for you. That was up humongous. there, as always. Oh, could it have a double, double We've got some, some clips so from a past here. series between nice Pot of Envy and, and, oh, and Lost Generation. Last I think hit, that was a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Ages, but it gets or, taken or last really. week. Second life is here, oh, yeah, that was last week. Okay. Yeah, and then and then Here another series uh, I casted Corinth. Green Everywhere versus Green Reavers versus so Goat Five. So we've got a mixture of these, so you can see both the teams in action, time, not together. Like they haven't played together. I don't, I don't think. Speeding out of there ridiculously fast. Lately, I have go check. Speed. Have they played Deep together bottom. already? DSP is all they alone. Get silent. Scream. Crow. Have Go played. Oh. Almost certainly going down. There's a soul bind. Yeah. They they just played last week. So take down. I feel like I just read that. Yeah. So these exact. This is a rematch of last week. That was humongous. Or was it two oh, weeks ago? Yeah, double, last week. Edge. Lost Generation versus the GOAT 5. Ice they went one and one. So forward, can't really tell what's going to happen from there. Both of the teams, save. they oh, each he's, have he's still what, alive. Like down goes six down wins down overall goes in season 31. That's oh, six so wins good. across How do they get six like that? What, Each what week has two games. So they've won exactly half of their games. They're right there in the middle. No idea who's going to win. Oh, I, mean, I think Goat 5 is going to win just because it's the great, they're the greatest of all time. I mean, I expect nothing hey. less. And they, they won a game up against Grand Reavers, who is a very strong contender in, <laughs> in um, whatever we're talking about here. Grand Reavers is like right up there with Pot of Envy. So Goat 5, they took the game off of them. I'm expecting great things from them. We also did they lost, they lost the Potter Rash, down. they beat WIB oh, Sabres, but I, that's Wards and Base. Oh my but gosh, that, so much damage with that the was expected. Polar Bear goes down so like hot. two hits. Daddy Odin's in the thick of things. As always, I've got my fellow Co Co-Casters today. We've got Pigu and Chingu. I knew he's Chingu a lot before. Pigu, you probably haven't seen that much. He is... They're both actually from work. They're both from different countries. Taking a lot of damage from, from Dream, but Dream is a little too far, and he's trapped from the tower. So actually, the trade from oh, no. Fred. Pingu's from Australia. No, Pingu's maybe from China. His name is Pigu, which is Chinese for butt. Yeah. And Chingu is, is Korean for friend. They all have their own little for special the things. All the way back to base. Uber to Let safety. me go oh, gosh. pop a notification in the Discord, letting people know that I'm casting. I will well, turn now, this up as well. Kind of separated. Oh, turn my mic up as well. Because, yeah. Okay, Vulgar Vulpix, you're here. Here we go. Um, who's playing? Oh, Lost Generation oh, versus wow, it's done. Goat it's like 5. They go for it. Snow is here. Drop the Dream Coil onto Icarus. Sun lifts on everyone. Ice half lands as well. Here we go. I've got my Necro Wafers. Don't you worry. The Blood Sugar is nice currently. Okay, oh, it's a little bit on the low side. I had dinner already though. I had the last of my tacos. That was great. Second life is here. Pit him out there though. He's getting like permanently wrecked. So I'm not really hungry. I've got water. Everything's ready to go. I've been making really good progress on my puzzle back there. Can you even see it? It's on the ground. Oh, it's on the ground over there. It's like nine feet, like over nine feet that way, and like over six feet that way. I'm working on. Third quadrant. Going forward, goes in, taunt, Making some great progress. I'm working on oh, the hippos he's, right now. He's still alive. Down goes tusk, down I'm sure goes I will show it to everyone once I finish oh, the entire so thing. Good. 
How do they get clips like that? What, Second what quarter there? took me like a little bit they over got, a month. They got this one's going to take me probably a full two months, if not more. Oh my goodness. Because it is a bear. Oh, this one is one of the, one of the quarters where it's like half elephant. Half, like one one. elephant, where it's like all the same color practically. So, not a very fun one. This week, yeah, first week of the playoffs, just to remind everyone what's at stake. Oh yeah, what, yeah, the, the, the pots, the prize pools, they do keep changing. Let me check and see what the latest one is. So the, so the current prize pool for Contender League is $200. It's a different amount per per level of the league. So contenders like right in the middle, 200 for contender, 250 for intermediate, 250 for define. Thank you very much to a couple contributors out in the community that were willing to make a donation and get the prize pools a bit bigger. In past years, they've been like 10 or $15. So this is pretty fun. That is a lot more. I should probably pull up Dota, make sure my clients updated. I haven't played in Trying to it's survive, like he eventually does go down. Try taking a lot of damage. Oh. Aegis here with the Catechilla Dream. Witch Trick to the trade. Hookshot does not land. Not yeah, so tonight back in there is the Goat 5. Aegis Tomorrow night is going to be Pot of Envy, as always. Cost. They rescheduled their game. The Pot of Envy but will be playing Diamond Hands, hands Together Fred. Strong. I think that's what they're called. Oh, God. It's an interesting name. Okay, come on, Dota. You got this. Stop oh, freaking God. out. My voice can't take much more of it. All right, diamond be... hands together strong. I know nothing about them except that they're pretty good. A lot of envies in the lower, in the oh, upper now, bracket with them. Kind of oh, now he's, now he's oh no! Okay, uh, I figured the balance is way off. I apologize. I never know what I'm doing. Thanks, Fred. Yeah, tonight's game is in the, lo the lower bracket. So they're, they're doing the same kind of bracket as last year. Pretty sure I spent, a last season, pretty sure I spent like a long time explaining it, walking through it with Nomad and various other people who know exactly what the bracket looks like. It was so weird last year because of the buys and whatnot. This year, there I don't see any buys. Everyone starts this week, I think. Everyone starts this week. And then the upper bracket gets delayed a little bit. As of now, the current, like the, the, the dates are a bit weird. I think they'll change the dates as we go along. But of course, like the grand finals can't happen until the lower bracket finishes and they don't want to like chain them all together. So there'll be like a weekend where it's just a lower bracket finals and then a weekend where it's the grand finals. And in the week, the previous weekend, yeah, it all it all changed together. But they all start this week. Lower brackets here, so that means if whoever loses this best of three between Lost Generation and Goat Five, they are out of the playoffs. No chance at the prize pool. I'm pretty sure it's an all or nothing prize pool. As far as like who who gets the money, I think like first place just gets all the money, and they get to divvy it up, divvy it up. However, they see fit. Maybe one person gets all of it, or they they distribute it more fairly. I don't know. Pretty fun sub. Yeah, they're winning more than I get paid. I don't get paid for this, but they're winning. Their their prize pool at least is more than what a cast would a caster would make casting the series. That that's something. Hmm. Okay, there's the password. Let's see if their thing's already up. I would really doubt it, but you never know. Oh, a lot of the lobbies are already up. But not this one. As far as I can tell. Hey, Chonsaw. Pigu and Chingu, don't forget. Lots of casting this weekend. The one tonight, another best of three tomorrow. I think tomorrow's series there is a bit earlier. I think they rescheduled it to like seven o'clock CST, seven o'clock my time. 
Usually it's 8 o'clock my time, so an hour earlier. And then I got another series on Sunday. That's the grand finals for CEA. They don't have a prize pool, I'm pretty sure, because the proceeds from that go to like charity or something. But they do win a trophy, and there are bragging rights, of course, because Amazon's the defending champions. Yeah. So now it's going to be Amazon versus Facebook. That game, we will have Squanchy supporting. In the co-casting role, just like last time, we'll be on the official CEA channel. That'll be great. Let's look for the lobby again. Oh, game coordinator. Oh my goodness. Oh, I love iBad. Such a cool name. iBad versus Diamond Hands. Wait, why are they playing? What? Is there like other two Diamond Hand teams? Are they playing for fun? Maybe they're playing for fun. I thought iBad was supposed to play Pot of Wrath. But they already played Pot of Wrath. Hmm. No idea. That was weird. Oh, nope, it's back to today. Dota 2 coordinator is being updated. That means I can't see anything at the moment, which really stinks. Hopefully, works out okay. So it's a full double elimination bracket. If you're in the upper bracket, your matches will be spaced out so that you play one every two weeks. Grand finals will be best of five, played on a weekend, but only if both teams agree to the reschedule. Makes sense. So, grand, so up, upper bracket people, if you stay in the upper bracket, then you're going to be good. You get nice breaks in between to have fun, to do whatever you want. Not a big deal. Still don't see any lobbies. Come on. Nope. I got nothing. It's okay, no worries. Let me switch to the trailer. I'm really bored of these replays. Hmm. Okay, now we got the cool little clip trailer. Well, Fred, Fred is has officially been here and Fred is playing. So whenever Fred says something, I assume he will tell me when the lobby's up. Cause Fred is Fred. Fred zero one two three four five six seven eight nine. The infamous Fred. It's being updated again. My goodness. What is up, Dota? What is up? I was so happy. I randomly played played with the friends that I play with sometimes whenever I feel like playing, and they randomly played ranked games, and we we won. I, I don't even know we were playing ranked. Until I looked up and was like, oh, hey, look, my MMR went up. It's not like I'm crazy good, but that was kind of cool. Let me double check with Fred that nothing is up yet. As far as changes in Dota since last we spoke, there was an update last week, but it was like during the series, I'm pretty sure. It was like in the middle of the series and there were like a bunch of little little changes we already talked about. They nerfed Beastmaster like hardcore because it was it was just so OP. They took out the max movement speed from Broodmother because they took out everyone else's max movement speed, but for some reason they forgot Broodmother's max, max movement speed. Now everyone's playing Broodmother and like all the, the pros. Pretty cool. Let's see, they they nerfed Grimstroke a little bit. Hoodwink is just, I feel like they took all the fun stuff out of Hoodwink. Most importantly, her ult. It doesn't give you vision anymore, so you can't like snipe people as, e as easily. But I've seen Hoodwink played in the pros quite a number of times. She doesn't seem super effective to me 
And nobody ever plays her carry. She's always support, naturally. It, make, it makes sense. Right, lots of Shadow Demon. Rushing the Axe as like a pause form. Getting the Axe up against the PA, up against the Bristle, up against the Timber Saw. Anything that needs a break, you get the three charges with the Axe Scepter. And, um, all right, Fred said there's no lobby and coordinator's down. Awesome, awesome. Not that coordinator's down, but awesome that I'm not missing anything. Coordinator's seems to be back up, as far as I can tell. But, no lobby. Cut. Oh, there's the lobby. Woo! And, of course, the password doesn't work because... I'm guessing there's some kind of delay. This happens many times. Nope, didn't work this time. Now it worked. I don't get it. Maybe they don't, maybe they like create the lobby and then they set the password after the fact. Maybe? I don't know. Well, the dire is all here right now. Lost Generation is here. And there is the GOAT 5. There's Fred. There's Tenbu. There's AZ. Dubu Polar Bear. I honestly have no idea who's a sub, who's the real team. I don't even know. I'm liking the name so far though. I'm liking Cracked Bleacher. I'm liking More Rice. That's a good one. Sai Moom. That's pretty cool. Icarus. Whoa, it's FSI Slayer. Hey, Franklin. Yeah, these are my co-casters. What are you talking about? There's a lot more stuff he's over there too. Don't you worry. I, always, I usually bring two or three to co-cast with me. Chingu's seen a lot of stuff. Pigu's kind of like an amateur. Don't expect much out of him. Lobby's here though. We're only missing one member of GOAT5. Let's see if I can figure out who is missing. Vino. We're missing Vino. Who is their support? A support. I don't know which support. <laughs> and Fred, what, what I forget what, what role Fred plays. He used to play always support. But I'm pretty sure now he plays something different. I don't know. I know I cast it last time. I just don't remember. Here's Vino. Everyone's here. Everyone's ready to go. This is so exciting. That's going to be awesome. It's been a while. I know it's Thursday and I usually hate Thursday because it's... Because I got to work tomorrow. And it's going to be the playoffs. So it's obviously going to be like later on in the night. So it's going to make it harder tomorrow. But come on. Tomorrow's Friday. My schedule is full, but it's still Friday tomorrow. And then we got more Dota tomorrow night. It's going to be, it's going to be great. It's going to be real great. Coin flip has occurred. Lost Generation has won the coin toss. They pick. Um, oh, there we go. Well, they get first pick. Now let us flip it over. Woo! Get pumped. Get pumped. Oh, I gotta turn on my audio. That's right, feel the burn. Hello everyone, welcome to another week of the Amateur Dota 2 Contender League Season 31. We are here in week number seven, AKA the first week of the playoffs. Here tonight, we've got a best of three as all the playoff rounds are best of three. Best of three between GOAT5 and Lost Generation. Greatest of all time five, I, I guess. They are two teams that have each won six games over the course of the first six weeks. That means they've won exactly half their games. Pretty good. So they're tied in that, in that sense. This is actually a rematch of last week. Hopefully they were either like hiding their secret sauce last week or they come up with new strategies. I don't know. But last week they played, they went one and one. So they're tied on wins. They're tied on playing each other. No idea who's going to win. Should be good. Both of them are in the lower bracket. So this is everything's on the line here. If they lose this series, they are out of the playoffs for good. What's on the line today is, or for the playoffs, is $200 prize pool 
that's like 40 bucks a head or whatever. I don't know. 200 dollars prize pool for this league. Pretty cool. Winner take all. So far, bands coming out. Nyx and Viper. Two annoying heroes to deal with. Viper has the break. Viper has the annoying harassment. A crazy annoying mid hero or off laner. Nyx also pretty frustrating, especially if you're gonna pick Snapfire. Yeah. For, to me, like Nyx ultimately just counter Snapfire, just totally. Lost Generation bans out the Jug, one of the best carries in the game, one of the best and easiest carries to play in the game. Scales very well, has really good early game, awesome hero to have. They ban out Centaur as well. Good offlaner, Stampede for escaping, all around great hero. They got Abaddon as their first pick. Typically, we see Abaddon as a support. He's got his Aphotic Shield, which is a shield. It's a debuff. It, it protects a hero from damage. When it explodes, it damages people around him. And it's a it, it dispels. It's a strong dispel, which is pretty good. But you could play him as a carry. Don't really see that very much these days. But hey, I've seen it sometimes. They might do something crazy. Who knows? Goat 5 grabs the Warlock. Classic support should be the support in the safe lane. Has the what? What is it? Shadow word? It's whatever word it is. Thing where it heals, it heals um, ally over time or damage them over time. Has the the big old golem thing, of course. Just awesome support. Fairly sustainable. Has has some good good healing abilities. Good slows. Good everything all around. Great hero to have supporting your carry. They grab Tusk as their second support. Most likely in the off lane. Typically, that's that's what we see. Tusk is good for roaming ganks. Just kind of rotate back and forth between the off lane and mid, making sure your mid hero has has enough space, has enough safety, doesn't get bullied too hard. Kind of showing up out of nowhere, rotating as needed. Tusk has is, is awesome for getting ganks and awesome for getting first blood with the tag team. Whoa, Franklin's getting mortal. I'm so impressed. You're pushing so hard. You're halfway to Divine Four. Yeah, I haven't really played very much. I'm playing with your friends. I play, I'm playing with, playing with your friends sometimes. It's pretty fun. LG grabs Void Spirit as their mid. This is a bit odd. They're picking it super early on. They're showing their cards really early. Especially considering they have last pick, they could very easily save their mid pick until the end, or at least pick a, a flexible hero. In this case, Void Spirit, I've never really seen anyone play Void Spirit anywhere but mid. So this isn't like a hero where they can say, hey, it could be mid or it might not be, you get to have the gamble, and then LG could save their last pick for either a mid hero or someone else. I, I don't know. I can't imagine that they would play Void Spirit as a carry or... Just a straight up support. I don't know. He's got okay utility, but he's just so much better as a mid hero. Getting those early, early levels. Go is banning some. Oh, will they ban Puck? Maybe they know something. I don't know. Puck, typically a mid hero. Banning that out. Banning out Life Stealer. Another annoying carry. Just like Juggernaut, he's got magic community built in. He's just really annoying to deal with. Very frequently banned, just because he's so good. I like playing him. He's fun. Banning out Underlord, Storm, Void. They're just kind of banning things out all across the board. <laughs> all the people they hate. Not think, no real focus here. Carry off laner mid. Whatever. And Goat5 gets the Necrophos. Okay. Not the biggest fan. But he's obviously a great hero. He's got his... His pulse thingy for the heals and the damage. He's very sustainable. He will work. He works well against physical DPS heroes with his shroud. He's got his Reaper Scythe, of course. He's carrying a giant scythe. What do you expect? Should be fine. Ten seconds remaining. You could play a mid, but I think he's classically in the off lane, just because he has so much sustain. He could kind of stand there and face off up against whatever supports there are. In this case, it looks like he'll be up against a lion. Which, yeah, that'll be annoying. Necrophos doesn't have a way to interrupt lion with the mana drain. So lion can probably just do a stun and then mana drain. Necrophos has to decide, am I going to let myself be sucked dry or am I going to run away? I don't know. 
Lion is just such a pain to deal with. If it's Tusk, though, Tusk plus Necrothos, though, that is kind of annoying. They got the tag team for the slow. They got the snowball for initiation. They have the shroud for the slow. And lots of, a good amount of burst damage. And they're both fairly tanky. So I, I'm liking their odds here in this in this off lane. Necrothos plus Tusk. They could, of course, just prove me wrong because everyone hates me sometimes. And they might send Necrothos mid. I don't know. Wouldn't be totally crazy. Now we've got a Luna. Which is proving my point. This Luna is definitely their carry. Like, I would think the carry. You can have support Luna, but we already have Tusk. We already have Warlock. That would make no sense. So carry Luna. Luna is... Luna's great. Like, she's really pretty. And she's in the Dota anime. And she's really fun to play. She's got her little noob. She's got her little ult. I love playing her. She looks really cool, especially with the various immortals you can do. Up against this lineup, Void Spirit can kind of ignore her. Ly it's going to be annoying for Lion, of course. Abaddon can also ignore her. So she's not really going to be able to do much against them. Void Spirit can dissimulate to escape, dissimulate or Astral Step to escape. Abaddon has his ult, so once he hits level 6, he can just ignore Eclipse. No big deal. Still, she's she's pretty strong. She's got a good amount of damage, very good scalability, very good scaling, good creep clearing, good pushing potential. I like her overall, even with her tiny little attack range. But look at that, she rides a lion, just like Marana. They're both they're both related to well, what's the what did the anime say was canon now? Let's see. One of them is priestess of the moon, and one of them is princess. I think. I got it all mixed up. I didn't want Luna to be what she was. I know she technically is Irish, like she has the accent. Well, Irish or Scottish or whatever, like Highlander accent. She has it in the game. But I didn't like how strong I was. I didn't like that they made her to be like the way she was in the anime. She was like a soldier and she was... Oh. I like her in the game. I, I, I imagine her character being a lot different. It was weird seeing her this way. Well, LG is doing something weird. Now they picked a Zeus. This could be a mid Zeus. Zeus is great up against Necrothos for sure. Really great. Has a strong burst damage. Necrothos has a Shroud, but Shroud makes him take, even though it gives him increased healing, it makes him take increased magic damage, which is perfect for a Zeus. Great to burst down the Necrothos when he's trying to Shroud to escape. But now I don't know, is it going to be Zeus mid? I would think Zeus mid, but then Void Spirit, what, offlane? Void Spirit support? I don't know what's going on. I should probably know these things. I've I've casted enough. I've played enough. But whatever. In these amateur leagues, people just have fun. People do whatever they want. We've had Pudge games. We've had Techies games. We have not had Meepo games. Yeah, we have not had Meepo games, I don't think. Pretty sure CEA League has had Meepo games. I don't think I've seen a Meepo game. That would be fun. How about that, y'all? If this game goes really quick... Then how about the team that wins? Y'all pick Meepo. That would be fun. What are these bans? I don't get it. <laughs> they must know something I don't know. LG is banning out offlaners, so maybe they, they must think Necrothos is going to be mid. Five seconds Not offlane. And we're still waiting for an offlaner because they're banning Axe and Mars. Goat 5 is expecting to carry, as you would think. Void Spirit can't really carry. Abba could technically carry, but that'd be kind of weird. Oh, I get all the little arrows mixed up. LG doesn't have last pick. Goat5 has last pick. Because these little arrows. How do I keep missing them? I guess, like, I see the pick word, and I assume it's, like, the last one, because they're, like, all out here. But really, this is the last pick. This is this is not the last pick. This is the last pick. I got 10 seconds. Got to pick soon, LG. I know, I'm calling them LG because... Last generation is such a long thing to say. Wraith King, there we go. A classic carry. Pretty safe. Now they've got two heroes that can both frontline, both take up a storm. We got three heroes now that can ignore Luna's Eclipse without much worry. Wraith King has two lives. Abaddon has his ult. Void Spirit has assimilate plus Astral Step plus Ewels. Once he gets Ewels, because he should always get Ewels. 
Well, in this case, he should definitely get Yule. Doing well to help counter against the Luna. And Void Spirit will do great up against Tusk as well. He can avoid the Snowball, too. Hmm. Who's the last pick going to be? Are they going to prove me totally wrong and prove LG right and pick an offlaner? Or are they going to pick a mid laner? Necrophose up against the Wraith King and a Lion. Not going to be very fun, to be honest. They got two stuns. But Necrophose plus Tusk is a pretty good combo. Well, they proved me wrong. Now it's Bristle plus Tusk, and that is not very fun. Aw. Oh, such a mean lane. Bristle and Tusk. That's just, that's just rude. That's just rude. Fred, Fred, Fred. Where are you, Fred? Yeah, Fred Necrophos. I have no idea what position everyone plays. We are about to find out. Icarus is a pretty cool name, though. You know, Icarus flying too close to the sun. The wax melts and the wings fall off, and then you fall back to Earth and die because you were trying to fly too high. So prophetic. Sounds very much like a Zeus mid laner. That's what it sounds like. ZX as their carry, Psy Moom as something, Bleach Cracker as a support or a, or a pause three. We will find out. Dubu Polar Bear on that Warlock. Bino's got the cool, cool Ice Axe. I like it. So many shiny immortals over here. And of course, the Luna's got the cool immortals. The Golden Shield and the Golden Glaives. That means they got the rare, the uber rare immortal. Because there's like multiple versions. You can get, it's like the same thing, but a different color. Gold is typically like the better version. And then you have like silver, which is the less good version. Or like color is the the more common version. Well, here we go. I am going to guess, I should probably be predicting things right now. I am going to guess with my entirely biased opinion I'm going to guess GOAT5 just because I'm really biased. They have a very sustainable lineup. They've got double heals. They've got lots of tankiness here. Luna for the carry. Wraith King and Luna, they, uh, yeah, Wraith King is probably a harder carry. Luna needs to kind of finish earlier. Someone pooped during draft. AZ needed to poop. Well, now we're good. <laughs> That's good to know. <laughs> yeah. I'm going for GOAT5. Let's see if I can tell from the items. So we've got consumables and Phantom Lord, Bleach Cracker. Okay, so Bleach Cracker is the pause 3. Yeah, and Nicarus is definitely made. We got a bottle queued up. Lion is the pause 5. Double Quelling Blades. Simon on the pause 4. Okay. Fred is going to be there. He could be a mid, he could be a mid Bristleback. That's not weird. I'm up, especially up against a, uh, oh, but it's a Zeus. That'd be lame. Up against a Void, sure. But, a uh, uh, Void Spirit, sorry. Nothing too crazy. Everyone knows where they belong. There's an unspoken thing, apparently, that the Radiant always takes the top runes. I mean, it makes sense because this rune is in their area, so they would they, you want to get these two. Whereas Dire, you know, they get this one and that one. Like, it, it makes logical sense. I don't really know myself. I always just, like, walk out to both sides and see where my team goes. I haven't played it enough to, like, know what is always the best way to go about it. Well, roll call. Now that we know everyone's seeming rolls. Though it's a bit different than I expected. We got ZX on the Carry Wraith King, supported by Psy Moom on that ABBA. Ooh, crit, big crit up from the Wraith King. Yeah. And Bino on the Tusk. Nice Ice Shard trapping in on his ZX. They can't really do much. There's the Aphotic Shield to protect him. There's the Courier. Be careful of the Courier. We're all good. Nice job, Fred. Oh, didn't get the Heart Shopper first. It's okay. It's okay. I always like Heartstopper for the sustain. 
But of course, you want the last hit, so getting the Death Pulse makes a lot more sense. There we go, there we go. So Fred supported by Vino. Over at mid, we've got AZ on that Bristle back. Yeah. I like it. Mid Bristle up against a Zeus. Yeah, this is gonna be after careful. A AZ's already got the the stick. So that'll make it a lot harder for Icarus to do stuff. And AZ will probably have to pick up an early level of Nasal Goo just to chase down Zeus. Make him a little bit more scared. Down at bottom, we've got Dubu, Polar Bear on the Warlock. Supporting Tenbu, Horan, Ten on the ever-immortal Luna. Things are happening in various places. Simon taking a good amount of damage from that last death pulse, but he's okay. Know when you're dying. Then at bottom as the pause three, we've got Bleach Cracker on I that Void Spirit. Supported by more rice, who almost gets the ward, but it gets denied by Dubu Polar Bear. Well played on that deny. Very rude, of course. Wait. Wait, that was a deny. No, more rice did the deny. What a jerk face. I can't even tell colors anymore. There's the nice spirit onto Google Polar Bear, but he's okay. No big deal. Oh, Aether Remnant. My god, why is the Astral Spirit? That's Elder Titan. Nice little stun just because. Because Tenvu Horn is being too mean. There's the Mana Drain. So rude. I like how the lanes are nowhere near what I was thinking. That that's that's this for you. I don't even know what I'm know what I'm talking about. So last hit. AZ is doing great naturally. Has good amount of base damage. 64 with the quelling blade. That is plus 12. Lots of damage. Things are happening in various places. Get to stun out and a slow onto Fred. Fred is getting crazy like that. Nice shards to block out followers. There's death pulse and Fred is okay. We're at bottom, there is the beam onto Bleach Cracker. There's the mana drain. Oh, so mean. Tenbu Horan's got no mana. Stop sucking away his mana. More rice, you're such a jerk face. Dubu mm. Polar Bear with the pull. Well done. Well played. AZ has, oh, got the finish. Wand now. Building up a lot of charges. Icarus. Has the bottle though, it gets the water rune up, oh, and Wreath King. Pops the stick charges, gets back up to almost full. There's the four stacks on the way. There's Death Pulse, so my Simon has to be pretty careful. The tag team has worn off, everyone's okay. Simon drops very low, but they're okay. When the heck is first blood gonna happen? Come on, Fred. Get those last hits. Get that regen. Ah, oh, Yeah, look at that regen. Woo! So much regen. He's fine. Oh, there we go. Tag team wants to get on to Psy Moon. There's a slow and Death Pulse finishes off Psy Moon. First blood drawn by Fred. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Once again, Fred proves himself worthy. As both a support, as a pause 3, and as a Dota player in general. My goodness. Duber Polar Bear leading the creeps on a merry chase. Beach Cracker trying to pull over. Creeps have pushed a little bit too far though. Looks like we're gonna miss a few unless Tenbu has really great aim. Last hit wise, yep. AZ is still leading the charts. Wraith King and oh, there's the slow on to Fred, but Fred's like, well, what are you gonna do? I got death pulse. You wanna come near me? Who do you think you are? Okay, well now he's scared. Simon has to be careful though. If we get a nice shard trap with the tag team. You're going to be in trouble. They're wisely backing off. Makes a lot of sense. He's got a, he's got a salve too. So whenever he needs to pop that aphotic shield and back off. There's the shards trapping in ZX. There's the aphotic shield, but it gets bursted off quite quickly. There's the crit onto ZX. ZX gets the sun out. And there is Thunder God's Wrath for Vino. Finish off. Fred needs him. One more death pulse. Pops a shroud. Death pulse in two seconds and gets it off. But Simon has the aphotic shield once again. Can Fred survive? Fred, what is Fred doing? Fred just didn't do anything and that's two heroes dying. Well played 
by Lost Generation. Nice timing with the Thunder God's Wrath. Well done. Both Abba and Wraith King survived. Haste on AZ, coming after Bleach Cracker, who also has a bottle. Wait, what? Oh, almost able to finish off Void Spirit, but not quite. They have double bottles. Okay. I suppose there's bounty runes now every three minutes, and they fully re re they fully restore your bottle charges. So you might as well do that. Vino is here. Vino really wants to gank Zeus. They know they really got to gank Zeus, but he knows something there, or is he just is? Oh, he's stacking. He is stacking. You're stacking. Yep, he's stacking. Did he successfully stack? Yes, he stacked. And Vino has backed off. Pinging down here. There are fatal bonds, though. They know where more rice is. No one seems to be in any particular danger. Okay, so last hits again. They're all clustered up there. The Wraith King as the carry as the pause one. He is doing a little bit better than Luna, which is which is good. He's also level six, and he has not skilled up his level six yet. So saving that for potentially needing the reincarnation later on in case he's about to die. Makes sense. AZ has the finish hood, meaning he can kind of ignore Zeus at this point. Icarus does have maxed out lightning, or arc lightning. Oh, over at top, they're diving in pretty far. There's a shard, there's a shroud with the death pulse. Vino is probably gonna go down, there's a scythe, and it does finish off Simoon very, very nice. There's a death pulse once again. Vino, one more hit, and down goes Vino. Thunder God's Wrath a little bit late. ZX is able to get the kill. One for one trade, support for support. Well done there. Stun whiffs onto more rice, but Tenbu has no mana pops to take charges. Gets the Lucent Beam out, but has no more mana for another Lucent Beam. Aether Remnant somehow picks out Doobie Polar Bear instead of any of those creeps. That was a little bit weird. Icarus just getting some, getting these two, two assists, just staying in base. I mean, staying in the lane. Vino circling around once again. Icarus has to be super careful. Oh, but AZ is not even here. Is he gonna word? No, he has no words. They don't have words either, so you could totally do it. Nope. Ah! For a lock. Do we pull still alive? No more actual steps. Nothing for a long time. He could he should actually be fine. Got level two shadow word. There's a loose beam. But yeah, Bleach Cracker doesn't have so much doesn't have anything. He cannot catch up. Well done. Nice job surviving on that. Just stick charges. Look, now he's going to be back up to like full. Look how strong it is. 35 over 12 seconds. So 35 times 12. Anyone want to do the math? What? Um, 350. Uh, 420. Something like that. Sure, let's go with 420. AZ's going in on this. Pops in his Lagoo, gets the stuff. Going in really, really far. But he backs off. What the blank? He might have done oh like, there's full set charges so simon would have been there a wise choice by az but now zx is alone up against fred not going to be too fun fred is getting a lot of damage onto the tower he knows he can take it he's got maxed out death pulse he's going to get the regen from heartstopper aura when he kills the creeps zx has to just kind of let it happen fred can attack the tower while the creep wave is drawing aggro Oh, but nice job ZX pulling the creeps out far enough away. Tusk dropping pretty low over here. Getting caught out by Sai Moon. There's a slow. Vino has the shards. Very nicely placed. Able to get out of there. Has just barely enough HP to survive Thunder God's Wrath. Well placed. Nice attempt. But Tembu Horan does go down. I totally missed that. That was a bit unfortunate. Dubu Polar Bear is here. They go in onto Sai Moon. The Fire Shield burst once again. One more. Quill spray and down goes Simoon. AZ is still here though. Golem is dropped. They really, really want Icarus. He has gotten three assists already. They really want to do it. And can they do it? One more hit. There's a shard and down goes Icarus. ZX TP'd in, has the armlet, has 26 charges, and the golem gets taken out so quickly. My goodness. Tanbu is TP back in. Needs to be careful though. Bleach Cracker has two astral steps once again. More rice is getting pretty close to six to that finger of death and they can very easily take down this luna 
if they so choose. AZ is quite tanky at this point, going for the Eternal Shroud, as always, as always makes the most sense. He is Bristleback. He does need mana. He does need tank ability, especially for magic damage, which is Zeus. Makes a lot of sense. Vino goes around here, Astro Step 4 with the Aether Remnant. He's dropping pretty low, but there's a Snowball. One more Astro Step out. There's the Hex, and they're totally okay. Bit of a rotation, but he didn't die. That's something. He's got level 6, so they can go on someone soon, hopefully. ZX, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. What? He's level 9. He's only skilled up 6 things. That's it. What is he waiting for? I know you save you save 1 for reincarnate, but... Oh, and Vino snags the bounty rune. Such a jerk. Oh, it's so mean. Down over here, Tenbu Horan is playing it fast and loose. Astral Step 4, Tenbu Horan's probably no down finger to the face and down goes that Luna. Pinging out Vino, but Vino with the Ice Shard once again to zone out CX. Everyone's okay. But that is like the second time Luna's gone down. And that's like in her lane too. What are you supposed to do? Up against a line and a Void. Void has two Astral Steps, so he can just zip in. Try something and then zip out if he needs to. This tower is still alive. What the heck? But Fred and Vino are here. They want to go in. Icarus knows it. Icarus is backing off wisely. Goat 5 needs to play it very careful here. The tower is right here. Support could very easily TP in. They've only got two. Here comes AZ maybe. Nope, he's just farming. They got to be careful. They're going. They're going. There's the TP out, and oh, oh, but they didn't quite have vision. He wasn't in range for Reaper Scythe, I guess. That was so close. They almost pulled it off, but nice TP by the Zeus. They do secure the tier one tower, their first, second, first tower. The first tower of the entire game. Okay. Item check. We've got Hood, we've got Vanguard, almost Eternal Shroud. On AZ. Luna's got working on the Mask of Madness. Almost there. She's going to be uber squishy. Of course, it's going to take her a long time to be very effective. She's got to get a BKB. They've got so much disable, so much magic damage. And when she turns on Mask of Madness, she is just dead. She can't cast anything. She's just going to get wrecked. This is obviously like a better, a good, a good farming item to have. You can attack faster. So you can farm faster. But you're going to be pretty useless for quite a long time. She hasn't had the best of games. Best of early games. Oh, and she gets caught out in her own triangle at this point. Thunder God's Wrath, and they just take her out. Three hero rotation. That's about it. There is the shards, but Bleach Tracker has one more astral step and is able to get out of there. Oof. They gotta protect their, their core. They gotta protect their Luna. For a third time, Tenbu gets taken out. They do take down this tier 1. Pretty good. Fred rotates bottom. Time to start pushing this bottom tower. DD Necro. Fred's got the pipe. Even more magic damage, magic protection. Working on the Lotus next, which is very good, of course. Lotus for the Yules, Lotus for the... Oh! Three heroes. Aether Remnant doesn't catch anyone out, but AZ's here. AZ's going in. There's a stun. His back is not turned. He's getting critted. He's getting mana drained. He turns on the shroud. He gets regen with the shadow word. He is so tanky. The goal is drop lands on the two. Great thing is kind of stuck in the middle of there. There's the fish punch on Tubi Tracker. He zips out of there. Fred's coming from the backside. He wants to get someone with the Reaper Scythe, but he doesn't want to waste it on Wraith King. Finger of Death goes out onto who? What in the world was that? Ice Shard's nice trapping in. Wraith King, and can they get him? Can they get him? He wants to save Reaper Scythe for a good target. Nice stun on a two. Snowball forward. ZX gets Reaper Scythe and down. Wraith King goes. Well played. Down goes Vino in the process with a nice little stun by More Rice. More Rice is getting jumped upon by Tenbu Horn, but he has to pass the mask. And AZ is way off in the backside. Fred is so low. Gets taken out with all that magic damage. Shroud is not going to do anything. Now it's AZ versus four. Can he do it? No actual step charges, but he goes the wrong direction. Juke out by Bleach Cracker. Oh my gosh, AZ is like totally fine. He's got full mana. 
Oh, that was that was lame. That was so lame. Well played by Lost Generation. They lost their pause one, but they took out Fred and they didn't lose more. It could have been so much worse. Oh, so much water. Whoa. What item is this? I haven't seen that in world. What in the world? Wait, and she's not even going for... What? She's not going for BKB. I thought this last fight kind of proved you gotta have BKB. Whatever. You know what you're doing way better than I do. Because you're way better than me. Let's check out the items. What's the one that does it? Is it this? Because that's for that one. That's for the glaives. That's mythical. That's mythical. So this one? I didn't know it would affect that. It's kind of cool. So down here, what's going to happen next? We've got Tusk with the Dalian working on the Solar Crest. Warlock working on the Force Staff. Very helpful, of course. Tenbu! Tenbu! You are out there totally alone. Okay. Whew. Oh, zip forward, Astro step forward onto here. Fred is getting hex. Fred's getting kind of jumped upon. He pops the pipe though. Vino snowballs in. Sun hits on a no one. They're going in. They want to reaper scythe. Come on. But he's silenced though. He's silenced. Can he get more rice in time? Reaper scythe. He's still silenced. Can they get someone? Reapers. Oh, but they, they pop the curse of Avernus and reaper scythe onto more rice as he turns around. Can they get Simum? Yes, they can. Very quickly. He tries to deny himself, but you can't do that anymore. Ever since that update, tip to more rice for turning around and giving Fred the kill. GG. Tree is dropped. Well played by Goat5. Getting two quick kills. Well, they weren't that quick, but they were there. Looks like they're going to have to lose this tier 1. We still got Golem in place. No Reaper Scythe, but we have Golem. Fred just TVs out right in front of their face, and they see the smoke, so they know what's happening. That was a bit... whatever. It's okay. It's okay. Vino. Vino and AZ. They're just having fun. Vino wants to go and really... Oh, but Icarus is here. There's the fish punch. AZ's here. They have no way to save him. He is so squishy. Oh my goodness. A tip to Icarus as well. Aether Remnant catches on to AZ. Dissimulate for Bleach Cracker to get out of there. Astral Step as well. Oh. Drops the ward right in there. Is it in range? It is. Is it in range? No way. No way. Is it like just out of range? Okay, let me turn this off. I want to see how close this is. Is it like just out of range? Let's see if they see it. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. They don't see it. What the blank? That's so cool. Dyer's well, somehow Vino knew to put this exactly out of sight. Like just barely out of range. Dyer's now they know they have vision. There's air shards to trap side Moom. Snowball forward once again. A fire shield has been popped. Nice sun hits out onto AZ. Curse gets popped. Abaddon is definitely going to go down. ZX is coming in here with the crit. But he Abaddon is going to go down. ZX is going to lose his first life pretty shortly. And he does. No amount of armor toggling is going to do it. We do have Golem. We're going to drop the Golem. Golem is dropped. Hits on the two. Thunder God's Wrath goes down. Eclipse has been dropped. And Bleach Cracker is taking a lot of damage. But down goes Tenbu. You're so squishy. Bleach Cracker goes down as well. Vino is chasing more rice in the backside. But there's the Hex. Icarus needs to be really careful as well. Gets a sign out. But Icarus, no, you stayed for way too long. No one can save you. They saved the rating, they saved a second life, but Icarus, you're probably gonna die. Come on, AC, do it! Oh, but Abba's alive, he's gonna get- Oh, but there's the Reaper's Scythe! Oh, and he's so close to saving it, but Fred does eventually get the kill with the Death Pulse. The Aphotic Shield was not enough to save. That was so dangerous. Goat5 Goat is able to finish it off. They get four and only lose their pause one. Tembu. Okay, he is just trusting his team that he will not die. Even though there's a Void Spirit, even though you keep dying, who needs BKB? I mean, come on. You are the carry. Your job is to dish out damage. Who cares about anything else? And Vino is everywhere all the time. He just is everywhere. He's being so crazy annoying. Did they deward this? They have not dewarded it, but they're going to soon, right? They got a sentry. They need the Zeus to come and deward. They have to know because because Bristleback threw a goo up here without having vision. So they have to know. Come on. They, they have to know. 
Well, they don't obviously have to know, but they could know. They could very well know. Does he have ult up again? 20 seconds. He'll have it up in time. Okay, that's okay. This would have been a great time to kill him, though. Because they know he's there. They, they know he's there. Why aren't they doing it? Here. Put a sentry down. Put a sentry down. You got a sentry. There we go. Okay. Whew. Now we're okay. Go at five focuses on this tier two tower. But they've, these things have been cleared out. Oh no. Mana drain. Such little mana. Wow, you have a lot of mana regen. What do you even have that from? So that's 2.5. Did you get the talent? Yeah, plus two. There we go. You got the talent. Side Moon gets charted out there. There's a tag team. Vino is like, I am taking you on all by myself. I don't care. I'm getting Thunderbolted. I'm in trouble. ZX gets the stun out. They're going in. They're all sprayed out. Golem dropped onto... Wait. Eclipse hits on a bunch of creeps. Doesn't really do much at all. But more rice is going down. Fish punch to the face. Sun is not connecting. Down goes the line. ZX is getting slowed to death. Golem's up in 10 seconds. It might be there in time. Aetheramic connects onto Fred. Thunder God's Wrath and Fred does go down. ZX is back up at full AC. Back is to them now. Is running away as fast as he can. Everyone should be fine, but Golem is going to be up. Golem drops onto all three. Perfectly timed. Shadow Word is not up or anything, but oh, ZX takes out Vino. And they take out Warlock as well. Oh my gosh, things are getting turned around. Tenbu taking so much damage, but ZX finally goes down. Icarus is still alive, though, on the backside. Dishing out so much damage. Aethermic connect once again, but AZ is able to take him out. Simon doesn't have ult again. AZ is going to take him out too. Aphotic Shield is not going to save you. And AZ takes out Simon and Bleach Cracker. Four for four. That was a good turnaround by Goat5. They got the Golem onto three. It was perfectly placed, but Tenbu is so squishy. And Vino is so... Well, Vino isn't that squishy, but Tenbu is so squishy. And they did not take out Icarus. They did not take out the dude dishing out so much damage on the backside. So much damage at such far range. They could not get to him. And of course, when it, when he casted the golem, Fatal Bonds and Shadow Word were both off cooldown. All three of these things were off cooldown. So if you had been able to cast the Fatal Bonds, that would have made a huge difference. You get the shared damage. Okay, at some point there used to be a slow. At some point there used to be a slow involved in this. I'm not sure when they took it off. Because it didn't like used to have it, and then I think it had it for some amount of time, and then it then stopped again, maybe? I don't know. Items. Okay, let's try the other side items. ZX has the armlet working on the S and Y. Well, it was working on the S and Y. Has the Sanj now working on the BKB. Because that's obviously more important with the amount of magic damage coming out. Void's got the Yules. Almost has the Scepter. Very, very close. That's going to be incredibly helpful. Silence all these heroes that really need their spells. Though, of course, you've got Lotus on here, which is going to negate that. And he's going to get Grieved, which is like a second dispel. So you got double dispels. But a Silence on a Warlock is going to be a really big deal. Warlock and Vino, because both of them, they don't have an easy recovery. And you've got the Golem on the Warlock, and you've got the Snowball save on the Tusk. All very important. Lion working on the Blink. Doesn't have much now. Era pause five. What do you expect? Abba working on finishing up that spirit vessel for the bristleback, most likely. Help hinder the bristleback and all the regen and stuff. Zeus working on the scepter. Has the aether lens for the cast range. Scepter is obviously going to be super, super helpful. Dishing out more damage from afar. That is all the items as of yet. I thought AZ was going to go for... Oh, what in the world is Crack Bleacher doing? Oh, he jukes out. He goes the back way, but everyone is there. I don't even know what was happening. What What was that? Why was he just randomly here? I, I assume he was hunting, but... There? Nice wards placed by Vino. But there are these wards here. Oh, that was a bummer. He just placed them, but... They're all right here, and if they're going to go to Roche, they're obviously going to do it. Oh my gosh, it's getting melted. So much armor reduction. Wow, look at that. So much armor reduction. Okay, not that much. I'm I'm getting ahead of myself. It is, it is dead, though. It's dead. Now Tenbu's going for that. 
DKB. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There's a smoke. They want to get someone up. Oh. AZ going forward. Wants to catch someone out. They're like, someone break my smoke. Someone break my smoke. <clears throat> I want it. I want it. LG is not taking the bait though. And Fred's not killing it because something. I don't know. We do have finished Solar Crest on the Tusk. Working on the Blink, which is going to be very important. Have the Blink. Jump in on the back lines, take out the Zeus. Jump in and take out some important people. Shards goes out, catches outside Moon once again. Nice little plays by Vino. Tenbu is still, still a bit of a ways from here. Like 700 from BKB. Nice job using Illusions to push a little bit. They're probably going to... Oh, can they do it? Yeah. Glaives bounce even on Illusions. Taking out a whole wave with just Manta Illusions. Dyer's Always fun. Top tower is under attack. Fred is only 1600 HP, but 50% magic resistance, 56% physical resistance. That's pretty good. Lots of armor. Lots of heals. Cover your eyes. Pipe. All good stuff. Warlock's got the shard. That's the AoE shadow word. AoE heals. Do it. Yeah, look, now everyone's getting healed. Even the illusions get healed. Oh, going on the back lines. Leech Cracker going in on two. Warlock, but he's so tanky. Zeus drops the Nimbus. There's the Golem. Hits on the two. Down goes Leech Cracker to the Leaper Scythe. Nice stun. Hits out on the three, including the Golem. They take out the Nimbus really quickly. Warlock lays down the slow. AZ's here, has the Lotus Orb, getting th reflecting things back. Tenbu's taking a lot of damage, but Tenbu does have the Aegis. More Rice fingers, but doesn't really do anything, and then more Rice just goes down. I guess that was the pipe. BKB popped by ZX. There's a nice reveal. Vino's probably going to go down. One more crit, and down goes Vino. First hero to go down. ZX's first life is probably going to end. A little bit more. Down goes Simon on the backside, and Glaives do not finish off ZX. But the towers are just melting. They pop the glyph. Is it going to be enough? This warlock chart is doing wonders. The golem is probably going to die. Yep, and down it goes. They take down the mid lane of Rax. Well done. Three for one trade there. And a lane of Rax. And now they're all back up to full. Pretty good stuff. Yay, shards. And the other shards. I want to see more shards. Bristleback Shard is pretty cute. Luna Shard is pointless. Oh, she's got BKB now. Thank goodness. Almost Greaves. So close to Greaves. Tusk doesn't need it. Nope. No more Shards. Glaze bouncing so far. And now they're going to bounce everywhere. ZX sends forward onto Fred. Nimbus has dropped down. Fred taking a lot of damage to the silence, but it heals back up like instantly. Eclipse has been dropped with the slow on Warlock. Warlock is just taking it. Do a pullover. like, whatever. And Crack Beecher gets fish punched to the face. And he's going to go down. He just some ways to get out of there. ZX is dropping crazy low. First life has gone down. Do a pullover. is going after Bleach Cracker. Get the Shadow Warden down. Goes Bleach Cracker just to a Warlock. How embarrassing. Nimbus is still here. AZ is getting dunked upon. But what is he going to do? ZX has to pop the BKB and run out of there. Down goes Sai Moon. So much damage, and they're all still alive. All five Go Five heroes are still alive. All getting healed up by the Shadow Word. GG is called by Lost Generation. What can they do against this crazy kind of sustainable lineup? They got far down a little bit, but there is the mech heal. There's the pipe. There's the lotus. There's the death pulse. And the Shadow Word. So much stuff. They cannot get through it. GG. Well played to Goat5. Congrats to them winning game number one. Both teams played a pretty solid early game. Nothing too crazy one way or the other. Vino did some good stuff as Tusk, rotating around, but there were kills on both sides, and the net worth was quite even throughout. Wraith King even had a bit of a net worth advantage, getting more last hits than Tenvu, and Tenvu died. Look, three and five on your carry. That did not turn out so well. She just kept getting wrecked in her own jungle not protected well enough but fred got pretty well, fred was just with wraith king and they were kind of solo doing their own thing not killing each other but just farming az was the real kicker though he was unstoppable up against icarus at mid he did die that one time but he 
God, he, he never died. Literally, he never died. And he just had so much sustain, so much damage. It's because we never got to the super late game. Bristleback is able to be effective all the way up through this point. Cool, cool. Well, we shall wait a little bit until the next game. It's a best of three. Don't forget. But goat five is up one. Okay, I've been meaning to try it for such a long time. I need I need a way to put like on this loading screen to put the winner, like to put who the, the current the current score. Like I could put like one on each side of the of the of the thing. I could put like a number on each side, maybe. We'll see. I'm not very good at this. Text. Um. Zero. What font do we want to use? Gotta use my own font. My same font as always. Okay, we need background color, I think. Wait, where'd it go? Where'd it go? I don't even see it. I put it somewhere. I don't. I don't know where it is. Oh, there it is. I gotta, I gotta edit it. It's way too small. Come on, come on. Okay. I need a background. Where's the background? Oh. What? Center. Why is it a line like that? What the? I hate this. I hate it. Well, it was gonna be like this, but this looks terrible. That's not gonna work. Let's see if the lobby's coming up yet. There it is. There on top of things. There we go. Lobby's back up. Okay. How do I? Why does it look like this? Um. Text. Cause it would look it would look okay if it was if it was like the right thing but why is there why is there so much space below it i don't understand that i changed the vertical alignment so don't don't say i didn't change the vertical alignment i made it align the right way that that, that is not my fault that is someone else's fault Well, for now, it just looks like that, okay? And then, like, I would take that and I would copy to the other side, and I would have, like, zero and then, like, one on the right side, maybe? Ugh, I hate it. Why isn't vertical alignment work? I have vertical alignment center. If I change it to bottom, it does nothing. If I change it to top, it does nothing. What's the point of alignment? Ugh. Fine, I'll take off background color. No background color. Let's make the text color be like that instead. Okay. There. Now it's text color. Okay. Font style bold. There. Now it's just a big giant number. Is that any better? Does that does that make everyone happy? Good. I didn't think so. Well, we're doing this for now at least. Just, just so I can have one. Okay, let's take you and put you over here. But that looks terrible. Well, it's technically there, but it doesn't fit with my little box. Hmm. Well, I, I tried. Let's just pretend it worked. Let's pretend it worked. I'll figure it out someday. Looks like GOAT5 is good to go. Last Generation is still waiting on ZX to join the team. They're in the lobby, but they have yet to join the team. Mm. What if I put it on the inside? So how about I like, I could collapse 
this in. I put like this in the center. Like, like that. And then take this. Put it over there and take this. Put it over there. Ugh, that looks so bad too. I hate it. I hate it. Oh god. Well, Goat5 is taking first pick and Lost Generation is taking Radiant. Oh, they did a coin toss. Here we go. Game is starting up again. Let's do it. Whole Neko wafers. Well, here we go. Hello, everyone. Welcome once again to game number two of the best of three between Lost Generation and Goat Five, aka the greatest of all time, Five. The winner of the last game was Goat Five in a pretty steady victory over Lost Generation. Neither side really had the upper hand for the beginning. It was pretty solid, but slowly but surely, Goat Five was able to overcome them with pretty crazy plays by AZ on that Bristleback and a couple nice golems by Dubu Polar Bear on that Warlock. And Tenbu died several times on Luna, but was able to kind of gain some steam, carry out eventually. Yeah, I, I don't know. It took a long time. Yeah, so this is the first week of the playoffs. For those of you just joining, this is week number one of the playoffs of the Amateur Dota 2 Contender League Season 31. They're following a double elimination bracket, and these two teams are currently in the lower bracket. So whoever loses this game, whoever loses this game, goes to the... Or they lose, they're out. They're out for good. They're out of the running. Whoever wins this game, they stay in the lower bracket, but they continue on playing. Everyone who's in the lower bracket, you can't, you can't get back into the upper bracket until you like win enough games, I think. However it works, I forget. Oh god, I should know this. Um, Five seconds remaining. Something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't. You have to like win every single game if you're in the lower bracket already. You gotta keep winning until you get. You can only get to the upper bracket at the very, very end. Yeah. So Goat Five, they ban the same two heroes as does LG, Juggernaut, Centaur, Nyx, Viper. They know who they don't want to play with. They know who they hate. They know who they're gonna ban. And Goat Five quickly picks Warlock once again as their first hero. They like this pick. Obviously went really well last game. Shadow Word is incredibly powerful with incredible sustain. And you get that shard eventually. They just became a team that could not be killed. And they just back off for like a, like 20 seconds. And they're back up to fighting. What, what's it called? Fighting form. Yeah. And LG grabs the Ogre Magi as the first pick. Always a safe support hero to pick up. Can work well as support in the off lane or the safe lane. Very, very tanky. Yes, Ogre Magi is melee, but has very high armor. You just get a level of Bloodlust. You can just wail on people with a Venom Orb, or you get the Ignite, and you slow them enough so you can just keep wailing on them. Pretty annoying to have with you in lane. Or to have against you. And they grab Necrophos this time. Last time we had Fred. Fred 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 on... The Necrophos in the off lane last time. Dire team's turn to ban. This time we'll see Necrophos on maybe Icarus, maybe Psymoom in the off lane. I don't know. Or no, maybe maybe Bleach Cracker in the off lane. We shall see. Goat 5 takes the Ancient Apparition, grabbing both of their support Ten super early on. AA should combo pretty well with the Warlock. Remaining. If you time the golem with the ice blast, that is a guaranteed hit, at least. But AA is pretty good up against a variety of heroes. I know when you pick her up this early, you don't really know who you're actually going to... You know, you're probably not going to counter anyone. Because you counter heroes like like Alchemist or Slark. Heroes that, that need that regen. They rely on the, the crazy amounts of regen they have. Slark with his ult, with his passive, and Alk with his ult, too. 
Oh, and Morphling, yeah, more, just counters Morphling like crazy too, as Five well. Seconds remaining. The mm -hmm. Ice Blast means you can't regen any health at all. So Morphling can't Five shift and all these bad things. Well, they're banning like the same people as last time. Like in exactly the same order. I think. Yeah. This feels like the same order. This is literally the same order. They're banning heroes in the same order. I'm... Well, because you're banning them in the same order, I, I refuse to provide any additional commentary. Aside from saying, you're banning them in exactly the same order so far. The first four heroes. And last time I commented upon how I was like, Six what... Remaining. They're banning kind of just like wide things across the board. With, with seeming Five no sense to, to me. They banned a carry, they banned a mid, and then Goat 5 last time they banned a support. Who do they ban? Oh, I'll see if it sparks my, my memory when they do it. They banned... Oh, I don't know. Oh, that's new. That's different. Pango's different. LG banned Underlord, Storm, and then... Oh god, what was the other one? Some kind of support, maybe. I should remember this. It wasn't that long ago. I should probably remember. Whatever. Ten seconds remaining. It was it was something. Now paths are diverging. Apparently remaining. their first four bands are set in stone. Even if the other team has already picked their offlaner or their carry or something. We don't care. It probably was good though that GOAT5 was not swayed by that second Void Spirit pick last game. I totally would have thought it was their mid hero, no matter how weird it was to pick it on the second round. They were not fooled at all, or they just kind of ignored it and stuck to their strategy, because the strategy works. It worked this. It worked last game. It has worked in the past. Both teams know what's up. Who do I want to see this game? Well, Pengo would have been kind of fun. They've already taken out Life Stealer. Ooh, Bloodseeker is new too. They banned Bloodseeker. How about someone picks a Brood, or a TA, or a Spec oh, Spectre is boring, or a Drow, or a. Well, nobody's gonna pick Techies or Pudge or or Meepo. So those are always on the, always on the table. Those are all always on the table. <laughs> Five seconds remaining. Uh, Enchantress is picked a lot, kind of boring. But Brood would be fun. Brood would be interesting. You can play her in various ways. Or Hoodwink. Hoodwink is fun too. I haven't seen people play Hoodwink. Or Mars. I know last time Mars was banned out, which was sad. As was Axe. As was PL. Oh, that was the last one. PL was the fifth ban of LG last time. Pretty sure. Hmm. Who would I pick if I were them? Timbersaw. Timbersaw? I would pick Timbersaw. Oh, that works too? Okay. I'm down for that. You've got the bulldoze for the status resistance. Resistance. You've got the charge to either get away when you've gotten cold feeted, cold footed, cold feeted, feeten, cold feeten. When you when cold feet has been cast upon you, when you have very cold Five feet, then you can charge away. Or bulldoze, which gives you like 50% or more status resi status resistance, which is pretty great. It's gonna be really hilarious though. I wanna see Warlock cast the big giant like cesspool spell that slows everyone to like minimum movement speed, which is like 100, 100 I think. And then Spirit Breaker charges out of that. It's really funny. It's like, it's like when you charge after you've been Venomous Gale by Venom, you, your charge is just so slow. It's hilarious. I love it. And Venomous Gale, like it, can, it wears off pretty quickly, but Warlock's thing until you get outside of it, it's not going to wear off. It's really remaining. funny. Goat 5 does not disappoint me. They picked Mars. We're going to have a lot of fun. Mars in this off lane. Fred as the Mars. I always think of Phantom on Mars. From the old TBD. That Fred was a part of. That's why Fred has a special place in my heart. Oh, they don't disappoint again. Brood and Mars in the same game. This is going to be fun. I have no idea what they're going to do with Brood. Brood is so weird these days. Because before it was all about, like, you go mid, you get the spiders, you get, like, a bajillion spiders, so you can farm everywhere all the time from, like, level 2. 
But these days, now the spider, the spider spawn thingy is, isn't until level 6, and it's your ult. It's the same kind of thing as your ult, but you don't get it until level 6. So you can't really get the crazy amount of spiders early on. You can't go farm early on. So I've seen it more being in the safe lane versus at the mid lane. She does have her insatiable hunger a lot earlier, of course, but it's just it's a different it's a different way to play. Goat five gets the Medusa, which is which is something. I guess they already have their Mars, which is pretty good up against Brood, but they can't pick Axe. Axe is a great counter to Brood. Medusa has a split shot, of course, but it's limited to what five shots, I think, and Brood can have like a bajillion spiders. So at some point, it's going to do squat, and the snake thingy will only bounce between a limited a limited number of targets yeah but it's gonna be a good game we've got some no, new fun heroes spirit breaker mars brood and medusa i am looking forward to this and this brood i'm gonna watch the brood a little bit more closely i think i want to see silk and bola in action i don't know if if zx is gonna know how to play brood Actually, Brood probably should not be their carry. I'm not sure how they're going to play. Assuming Spirit... So it could be Brood offlane. That could make some amount of sense. But Necro offlane makes more sense. Brood mid does not really make sense anymore. Brood does not have very high base attack damage unless they change that. And it used to be you need your spawn spiderlings. You get an early soul ring. And you, you last hit with your, with your spider nuke. And then you have a bunch of spiders. And you can like last hit a lot better. We don't have a, a, a mid yet for GOAT5. We don't have like a hardcore carry for LG yet. So yeah, maybe it's going to be an offlaner brood with the Spirit Breaker and then a mid Necro. Seems like GOAT5 is expecting a carry stall. Ten seconds okay. Left. Decided. Yeah, Brood as a carry in the safe lane up against the Mars is not going to have very much fun. Not going to have very much fun. Especially a Mars with an, a with an AA. Because you got Spear into Cold Feet. That's just a jerk move. Or even a Mars plus a Warlock. That's just going to be an unstoppable lane. I don't care if you have Ogre Magi or not. It's going to be ridiculous. Ridiculous. Banning out the PO. Oh, that would be so annoying if you had PL and Brood. So many illusions. Fatal Bond is kind of rendered useless. Ugh. Those spiders are going to really help up against Warlock. That, that's a good point. You have to make sure you, you get rid of the spiders first and then cast Fatal Bonds. Oh, Lestrac. 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 I will say Lestrac because that's cool. LG bans out the Bristle because Bristle would, Bristle would wreck. Brew cannot touch Bristleback. Spirit Breaker cannot touch Bristleback. That that would be miserable if it was Bristle again. The Shrak though will do very well up against the Brood. Hoodwink! LG picks Hoodwink. Yeah, I'm calling it. It's Goat 5. Goat 5 is going to win. This team from LG, it's going to be really fun, but... But but what is it going to do? Like, how, are they, how could they possibly win? I don't... We got mid Necrophos, that, that's okay. We got pause three Hoodwink and a carry Brood. Oh god. Oh god. <laughs> yeah, I'm not I'm not feeling this at all for them. <laughs> this is this is Oh, but Spirit Breaker looks awesome. More rice, you look really, really cool. I love it. You look cool too, but you have the forbidden extra arms, which I do not approve of. They still look very cool though. I, I still like it. Fred, I need to give you I need to give you some kind of better skin, because you need a cooler skin. AZ, no skins? No skins. Except for your stick. Cool sight though. I I suppose. Ugh, no skins on Hoodwink yet. They don't really exist. And brood skins aren't really very exciting. At least you got the lightning spear. I like the shield though that's like that's like lava coming out of the mouth. It's like a mouth on here and it's spewing out lava. Oh and I think the on that shield I think there's it's like you have a Medusa head on here. Or or is that something else? Someone has a Medusa head on something. Which would be kinda hilarious. 
Well, here we go. Here is the lineup. Goat 5 versus Lost Generation, game number 2. Match point, or what, what do they call it? Match game? Uh, the, the, what, what's the... This, this could be match game. Uh, match point is like the point that decides the match. What do you call a game that decides the fate of your thing in the tournament? It's the deciding cat game. Whatever, there's probably a term for it. I don't know. Things are weird though. Oh. What? Okay, well, Bleach Cracker has boots as the Spirit Breaker, so 49 damage, Hoodwink, it's not very much damage for last last hitting. And assuming more rice is support based on the build, yeah, definitely seems like support. That's lots of boots and no damage. Medusa has more damage. Should be a little bit more fun. Side Moom's hanging around bottom. Maybe just looking to see who picks up the rune. Because Psy Moom could very easily die. Psy Moom. Good. Just checking. Just checking. This ain't no snowball and fight. the X is laying out some webs, maybe. Yep. Laid out some webs. Well done. One, two, two webs. And keeping one in reserve. Well done. Runes are pretty even. So, lanes. Tenbu Horn the Tenth on Medusa as the carry, supported once again by the infamous Dubu Polar Bear on that terrifying warlock. My goodness. Up against more rice on the Spirit Breaker, supporting Bleach Cracker on the Hoodwink, I, I think. Oh no, more rice is maybe getting the last hits this time. Oh, he gets the last hit. He did it. He does have way more base damage, so he is the one that needs to be able to do it. Oh, Bleach Cracker doing a lot of damage on a Tenbu. That's that's pretty good, actually. I'm impressed. Level 1 Greater Bash on the Spirit Breaker. Maybe Hoodwink is actually pretty cool. If you hit it at the right time, it's, it's just like Witch Doctor. Get some good bounces. That's actually quite a bit of damage. Even with her super crazy low base damage. Over at mid, we've got AZ on that Shrek. Up against Icarus on the Necrophos. They had a lot of fun last time. Let's see how they fare. Both heroes deal a good amount of magic damage. But Necrophos, of course, has naturally the more sustain. AZ needs to get a bottle this time. Oh, and already has the bottle. Gets the slow. Dishing out quite a bit of damage. Icarus. Drops a stick and eats a tango. Regenning like crazy now should be perfectly fine. Yep. Heart stopper aura. Pretty fun stuff. Look at that. So much regen. Over at bottom. They are doing a lot of damage on the ZX. ZX is getting hit, but perfectly fine eventually. ZX and the brood, supported by Sai Moom on that Ogre Magi. Oh. Icarus is so low. Water rune followed by AZ and Eden. AZ heads bottom to grab the bottom rune as well. Oh, they get on a Dubu Polar Bear. Dubu Polar Bear does not have level 2 yet. Greater Bash does land. Dubu Polar Bear is hanging around. Why are you hanging around? Oh no! Oh god! One more hit. It's gonna be enough. Bushwhack is able to secure the kill onto Dubu Polar Bear. And Bleach Cracker goes around and takes out the courier. Pay attention! Oh, there goes the Wraith Band recipe and the Tango's Tenbu Horan. Only has a salve now. Well played by Bleach Cracker. Getting the kill and the courier. It is hard to pay attention very quickly. People taking damage. I never finished. At bottom, we've got Vino on the many armed ancient apparition supporting Fred on that Mars. They are having so much fun. Vino is just harassing to no end. Got the Soul Ring on Fred. ZX also has a Soul Ring. But, oh, it has a Silken Bola, I guess. But it doesn't really do very much damage. Brood plus AA would be kind of annoying. Insatiable Hunger has been popped. Regening back up. Pretty cool. 
That works pretty well. It's already over, but oh, and Medusa goes down at the top. Tenbu Horan this time gets charged, probably gets bashed a couple times for luck. Or maybe not. They're doing pretty good. Well played. Yep, a charge and a push back. Don't lose the carrier. Oh no. Oh, and we cracker get the second carrier snipe. Bushwhack does not connect. Charge forward onto Dubu Polar Bear. Doesn't really do too much. Weed Cracker is, is pretty low. They're getting a good, good amount of damage out onto the, the ZX is just regening back up again with the Intangible Hunger. They do the Cold Feet to drive her back off so she cannot regen all the way back up. Well done by them. Fred spears out to drive him back. Fred also has a bottle. What is this double bottle mechanic? I don't understand. I don't get it. Necrophos seems to be pretty solidly... Oh. Dubu Polar Bear has a Shadow Word. Trying to kill the courier but not able to push back lands on Dubu Polar Bear. And he's taken a lot of damage. Pops stick charges. Should be able to get out okay. And does indeed get out safely. His friend Medusa has a south, but of course we've got Shadow Word. We're perfectly fine. No big deal. They're doing so well. Spirit Breaker plus Hoodwink. It's pretty cool. Pinging out ZX. They want to get a kill. They want to get a kill. They're so low down here. They're so low. Oh, Insatiable Pucker has been popped. Venus. Oh, there we go. Time Moon gets taken out by Ancient Apparition with the very last chilling touch. Nice spear by Fred to drive off that Broodmother before she could finish off AA. Well done there. Good setup by both sides. Fred just happened to get the good spear placement there. Well played by both. Tembu Horan! Tembu Horan! Oh, it doesn't actually land on there. That was a bummer. Bulldoze. Look at that. 70% status resistance at level 4. That is cray cray. You know it's here to stack. Yay! It's like good supports. The people I play with, Fred, Fred's friends, they are so good at stacking. I love it. They're such good supports. Whenever I play like carrier offlane, Fred is gonna get caught out. Nice spear gets breed to the wall once again. Time Beam is doing a lot of damage. Fred TP's out of there. Wow, okay. TP's all the way back to base. I suppose Vino is pretty far away, but Vino had bottle. A little bit odd. Charge forward onto Dubu Polar Bear. Here comes Hoodwink. Gotta be careful. Bushwhack does connect. He's stunned. Tosses out the acorn and a couple more hits. Dubu Polar Bear does go down to one more hit for more rice. At the same time, AZ goes down at mid to Icarus with the Reaper Scythe. My goodness. LG is really coming back with a vengeance. I thought it was going to be an easy win for the side of Go 5, but no way. AZ does connect, dishing a lot of damage out, but Icarus has the Death Pulse, has the Eternal Shroud. You got to be careful, AZ. You got to be so careful. Oh god. Oh god. Icarus is like, dude, I'm fine, man. If he just pops this and pops this, he's, he's totally good. No big deal. And AZ is back down to like nothing. Bit of a bummer. Last hit wise, AZ is, is leading a bit, but of course Necro got the kill. Icarus is in the lead net worth wise. Last hits, ZX. Oh, ZX is quite far ahead over Tenbu. They are defying my expectations. They make me question if I even know how to play this game. Because I didn't think it would be working out this well. This is just weird. This is weird. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Eight minutes. TP top by Spirit Breaker. Are they going to charge forward? Nobody really charged on Bushback. Has landed on Tenbu Horan with the Acorn, but it's just doing whatever. She's got the Arcane Boots, so she might as well spam some things. No big deal. AZ has the haste. Lands again. Very nice job with that. 
Send before and crazy load, charge four edible rice, but Shadow Word is healing. Reduce it back up enough. Has the power charge as well. Second Shadow Word, perfectly fine. Level six though, almost on more rice. That is gonna be a pretty big thing. We do have six on Tenbu, but not no ult. No whatever it's called. Stone gaze. Level six though on more rice. Gibby Polar Bear is so gonna die if he shows himself too far. AZ's gotta be careful too. Yes, he's farming out there. Perfectly timed with the nine minute rune. But only two charges now on bounties. Mid tier one tower goes down. Nice job pushing by Icarus. Icarus does not have a global presence this time. Now he TPs top. Because now he knows he's got to travel around if he wants to impact fights. They can kill someone so easily. You've got charge with nether strike with reaper scythe. It is just way too much to handle. Okay, Polar Bear, you're dead. Bushwhack does connect. There's the charge and reaper scythe. Oh, are they going to blow it? Nether strike goes in. They don't need to waste reaper scythe. Tenbu does get out though. That's good. More rice now on a killing spree. Goat 5 1, game number 1. Caster's Curse. Yeah. They won it pretty handily. And I thought they were going to win this game pretty easily given their draft. But I am being proven totally wrong by Lost Generation and their crazy awesome plays. They really know how to play Hoodwink super well. And Spirit Breaker, AZ drops the thing, but he is getting charged. Bushwhack does connect. So nice. There's the Fire Blast to finish off, and AZ is going to go down. Lands the stun after death, but does die. More rice with the fourth kill. More rice is dominating. My goodness, this is ridiculous. He's doing so good. He's still not even close to the top of the net worth. He's got four kills. Ridiculous. Okay, well, Fred at least is having a good time down here. Working on that bottle. TP back to mid by AZ. They gotta be careful. More rice is here once again with Saimum. Charge forward onto AZ. Poor AZ. No tower to protect you. There's that. Here's the charge. Golem is dropped, but oh my god, there's the Hoodwink ulked. Fire Blast forward onto Saimum with the multicast. Ice Blast coming out. Is it gonna connect? It does connect on the Saimum. They back off the golem though, it's not there in time. Simum does go down. Wait, what? I thought the golem didn't follow and then the golem followed. Why did... Okay, I should have followed. I assumed that they were going their separate ways because they were gonna die. But for some reason, Simum hung around. Just for fun. Just, just wanted to get back to base. Wanted to get a free TP. Always gotta get those free TP. Oh, attempted TP. That's what it was, an attempted TP. And the golem just walked up the cliff. That is unfortunate. Now he's got to walk all the way back to base. Or back to lane. Whatever. AZ's be trying to be as, as proactive, as aggressive, as assertive, as forward as he was when he was playing Bristle. Definitely not working out in this game like it was last time. Definitely not. Not nearly as tanky. Continuously gets picked off. But farming so much faster, I think. Still staying really high up in the net worth. Necrophos is also doing pretty well. Necro has the mech already. Working on the Eternal Shroud. We got a TP up top. Tenbu has shown himself once again. And as a charge, Tenbu is gonna die shortly. I'm sorry, buddy. You are being enclosed by four people. Bushwhack is there and Reaper Scythe finishes the job and down goes Tenbu. At the same time, four heroes of Goat 5 go bottom and they take down ZX. There we go. So one for one. Four heroes committed on each, on each side and they take out the other team's carry. Fun stuff. Now let's see who can take down the tier one faster. Looks like LG has the edge here. Working on, working on Eternal Shroud. Has their 
We do have Lestrak with level 3 Edict, but they're going to back off, it looks like. That's weird. Why are they backing off? They lost their tier 1. What are you doing? I don't get it. Well, sure. Just, 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 just push it. Just push it. Okay, well, they got it. They're not even going to waste the Edict. There's no point. Tenbu is once again out here in the middle of the map. And let's see if you get charged. Because the dudes are right here. Yep, there's a charge. And then Nether Strike, maybe. Does not have Stone Gaze. Nether Strike. Oh, boop. Levels up Stone Gaze and pops it. Well timed Ice Blast coming in. Once again on the side room, <laughs> Regen Rune does nothing. That was kind of funny. Tenbu is saved by saving that level of Stone Gaze. Very nice. That is an ability that Luna does not have. That is one less kill, one less death. The, the death has been at like the same exact times too. This is like exactly when, as Luna, he died the previous time. <laughs> oh god, this is funny. More stacks. Oh, their team is so nice. Blink on Fred. Here we go. Oh no! Oh no! Dubia Polar Bear is caught out. Has Golem, but there's Bushwhack. There's the stun. And goes and dies. Okay. Well, that's that. At least Beachcracker wasted the Sharpshooter, even though it's a really short cooldown. And she killed the Courier. Oh gosh, they back off. They gotta be careful, don't get seen, or else you're gonna get wrecked. Nice job, Beachcracker, throwing out the tree, trying to get Vision, trying to catch someone out. That would have been actually really, really cute if you did. They don't know Fred has a blink yet. This is the time for something big. But you need someone else here. You've got Golem. Here we go. Arena goes down and Spear to the wall on an Echo and Ice Blast to follow. Down goes Icarus before it even hits. Ice Blast does connect on a more rice. There's a slow. More rice taking a lot of damage. Is it going to be enough? Is it going to be enough? It's not going to be quite enough, but Shadow Ward is there. Bushwhack does not land on anyone. Stun does not quite land either. There's a Fire Blast onto Fred. More rice did not die. Oh my gosh. So close. Down goes Bleach Cracker. Oh my gosh. So squishy. That was crazy. Blink reveal netted them two kills this time. Well done. They finally take down Icarus. But they were not able to take out the unkillable Spirit Breaker. 4 0 still. But only level 8. That, that's just what happens with Spirit Breaker. Sai Moom is. is Oh, there was no spear. I was like, what, what the heck happened? Fred has to get out of there. Fred's got to get out. Got to start saving for that shard. Shard is very important. Tenbu has the Yasha working on that Scotty next. Farming up those spiders. Yo. Yay, spiders. Fred working on BKB. Necro has Shroud coming. Is Shroud, or did you change your mind? Is Shroud on the courier? Shroud is so close. Shroud is so close. Just kill a couple more. Oh, charge over there. Onto AZ. How do they even have vision? What? What the heck was that? Maybe it was an illusion or something. Oh, they charged. Now, almost. So close. It's not quite enough. One more camp. One more camp. He really wants it. No, it's not enough. Poor Icarus really, really, really needs it. Sly Moom, working on Aether Lens. Spirit Breaker has the urn. Or his spirit vessel. Maybe it's flying out. Yep, flying out now. It should be. Pinging out here. They really want to get Bleach Cracker, but there's the Scurry. Not able to find her just yet, but she is kind of stuck. She doesn't have a TP. She does not have a TP, but Go5 doesn't even know. What is she even going to do? Scurry's not up for a while. It's kind of funny. Put out your Ice Vortexes. She's got to sit there, right? 
Okay, she's scaring out. She's coming forward. Um, is she gonna show herself? It looks like, Dyer looks like she's just gonna walk by. Yeah, everyone's gone. Big things happening here. Stone Gaze has been popped. Side Moon is getting caught out. Arena goes down. Spear to the wall by Icarus. Icarus is going down, but Icarus is so tanky. Be precise for it onto Tenbu, but oh, Manta dodging it. Cold Feet has finished off Icarus. Icarus goes down. Intangible Hunger has been popped by ZX. ZX doing so much damage on Tenbu. Tenbu's banished shield is totally down. Oh no. Oh, Spear jumped forward by Fred and spearing Brew to the wall. ZX does go down before he can finish off Tenbu, but charge forward onto Tenbu and Tenbu does go down. Spawning spiders as well. More rice is just too strong. They can't catch up to him. He's too fast. Well, maybe. AZ is here. AZ has the fuels. He has the stun to follow. There we go. Ice blast and the spear. And oh my gosh, so perfectly placed. Three combos and more rice's five time streak finally ends. Trading his streak over to Fred, who is also now dominating. Well played. That, they lost they lost ten boom but I've, I've grown used to tenbu dying just because that's that's favorite way to do things play a hero play a carry farm and just just keep dying keep getting caught out not not a big deal it's okay this time though a lot tankier than before and very nice manta dodge well i don't even think it was a manta dodge the mana shield helped a lot it felt kind of like a manta dodge but you can't you can't if you're if you're precise you can't like Manta dodge that. That's not, that's not a thing, is it? That'd be kind of weird. Hey, it's Phantom. Caster's Curse. Necro has the Shroud working on the Greaves. Mostly the same build as last game, as Fred in the last game. Side Moon. Um. Hoodwink has lightning. Okay, so Bleach Cracker is going not support build, going... I guess you just get lightning even if you're support, because Forge Staff and lightning, and then going Aeon Disc. She does have some amount of utility. People are pinging things out. AATP's top. Everyone's kind of spread out. I don't know what to think anymore. Brood has Diffusal. Lesh has Boots. Has Boots of Travel. Working on BKB, I assume. Medusa still just has Manta, working on Scotty, but quite a ways away from it. Mars has Blink, three hero Smoke. Smoke has been revealed. Oh gosh, there's Yules. Spirit Breaker is charging in. There's the Cold Feet. Arena goes down, drops onto four, onto three heroes. Golden Pits onto four, and they're getting massacred to death. Down goes Spirit Breaker and Ogre Magi. And Hoodwink just one after the other. So perfectly placed. My goodness. They just, that was the combo right there. That was the combo. Drop the arena. Golem goes down right on top. Spear goes through. Yes, Necker was right outside the arena, so Icarus was able to get away, but Ice Blast soon to follow. Oh god, that was great. That one, that was that was the play of the game so far. Well done. Well, good job with the smoke. Oof, that was good. That was good. And Tenbu, of course, was nowhere, was on the opposite side of the map, doing whatever opposite side of the map carries do. Same with ZX. They just gotta keep on farming. It is how the game works. You kinda, your carry just farms. And the rest of you duke it out. And at some point, your carry becomes strong enough to participate. And becomes strong enough to destroy the entire team all by themselves. That is the eventual goal. They're smoked. Charge forward on by Spirit Breaker onto someone. Hits onto two. Onto three, actually. Arena goes down. Cold feet. Spear once again connects. Ice Blast hits onto two and down goes Side Moon every time. And more rice. They were trying so hard. Tip onto more rice. They're, they're feeling bad because he just had such a good early game. It was just wrecking early game. No goal in that time. Yeah. Arena is such a short of cooldown. 75 seconds, Ice Blast is just a 40 second cooldown. It makes sense. But he was, Spear Breaker was just doing crazy good early game. Got five kills without dying once. They're glad they keep killing him this time. He is that kind of hero. They want to get top. Yule's on to Necro. There's a stun. There's the Ice Blast follow and Necrophos is getting wrecked. 
Super Baker charges in, as always, another, another blast, another strike. What a quick little thing. Bye. More rice goes down, more rice buys back. Fred is glimmered, has already popped the BK beam. Cage full of hunger, sharpshooter did connect on the left track way back then. There's the fire blast on the AA. He's gonna get killed probably by Brood. He does indeed go down. Fred is getting out of it really quick. Icarus coming forward. Icarus does have a precise. They charge out Dubu Polar Bear, who has been spotted, and he does eventually go down. Icarus on the front lines trying to find a Reaper Scythe, but Leshrac has TP bottom with the Edict. Trying to finish off the tower, but Bleachcracker also has TP'd. Clear out the Creep Wave. And Tenbu is, of course, farming up the Scotty. This time, ZX participated in the fight. So, I would say Goat 5 had the advantage this time. 4v5. And they still turned out just fine. Well, fine, relatively speaking. Top tier 2 goes down. But the first tier 2? That's the first one. Now they can take the outpost. And they do take the outpost, of course. Goat 5, are you gonna are you gonna stand for that? Are you gonna take that? Tenbu's got Scotty though. There we go. Vino's got Glimmer Cape, which has been very helpful. BKB finished on AZ as well. Now we need some mana. Now we need Bloodstone or Scepter, sure. The shard is fun. I saw the shard recently. Cause it was kind of it was so pointless where like what in the world what kind of shard is this it's so weird it causes your little aoe stun to just repeat every five seconds like three times and then it gets bigger each time but it, it's five seconds in between each one it kind of works with the arena and the golem i suppose if they're if you're kind of confined to the same space like to one space for a while and you could kind of like layer them down because the cooldown is nine seconds you could get a cooldown reduction neutral item and you could kind of chain them make it hard to push the high ground you could do things four hero smoke let's just tp back in zx is here fred comes in spear to the wall once again and zx arena goes down golem goes down, and ice blast wow they want to take down this brood what in the world they drop all their oaths on it just brood well all but stone gaze my goodness oh this tier two they're taking it down they were not happy they lost theirs before. And they're gonna keep pushing. No edict. But the golem is, is the, where'd the golem go? There's the golem. There's the golem, Dubu. Acorn goes out, bushwhack connects onto the illusions and the golem. Poor little golem. There's the edict though, and the tower is just getting melted. It goes down. Let's track, let's track. See, it would be like sitting here, and it would get bigger, and then bigger. Easy took a big amount of damage. Glimmer Cape Fred out, and they are backing off. Goat 5 is playing it safe. Defending the bottom tower. They will not let this tier 1 tower die. Never ever. This is the most crucial tower. It is so close to the other tower. And something yeah this is like the, the these towers are like the ones that nobody cares about that's why they last so long there's not like a strategic value to getting them oh no reaper scythe on a tenbu tenbu why are you doing tenbu things don't uh well there we go the expected pickoff and fred is getting charged blinks forward not aware he's being charged aa is here and warlock is here but there's no goal oh he backs off Let's track TPs. I'm not sure why he gave up. I guess there wasn't enough support. Sure. They're here. They want to catch someone. AZ pings at Icarus. There's the Yules. There's the stun. There's the ice blast. He is so tanky still though. He pops the regen. There's the AZ with the BKB. Arena by Fred with the spear once again. Simon goes down as always. I just feel so bad for that. More rice is there. He's got to charge up in a second or two. Is he going to charge or is he going to... Well, he's right between two vortexes. They barely can't see him. And now he charges away. Just to get out of the trees, he backs off. Do we have shard? We do not have shard yet. It's coming out though, right? Shard is coming out? Yeah? There's the spiderlings. 
That lasts such a long time. Oh god. They changed that so long. Jeez. That lasts forever. Doesn't really say. On here, it doesn't say how long they stay. Charge on the AZ. AZ uses to get away. Spear to the wall once again. More rice. There's the golem. Drops on the two. BKB is in pop by ZX. Has got hit by the ice blast. Dewey Polar Bear is going down. Gets finished off by the sharpshooter from Leech Cracker. Another strike comes in onto Dewey Polar Bear. Oh, is onto AZ. AZ goes down. Oh god, Ghost Scepter popped by the AA, but gets charged and bushwhacked. Gets totally wrecked. Three for one. Fred spider legs out of there. Should be fine. And of course, Tenbu was not there because. Because of course, his team is doing just fine. His team is doing just fine. Ooh, we've got the Gleipnir. Gleipnir. We've got the Gleipnir on Bleach Cracker. It's such a good item. It gives you stats, gives you lightning, gives you the root. I just love it. And it looks really cool too. Fred's gotta be careful. No BKB. You can't really kill anyone by, anyone by himself. He's not really, doesn't have a damage build per se. And this, this Necro is so tanky as we've seen. Mine is truly a blessed life. Even landing all that stuff, they were able to take him out eventually, but only by committing Yules into, into Split Earth, into Ice Blast, into Arena with the Spear. The then they finally took him out. Yeah. It took quite a lot of work. The brew does BKB and Diffusal. Working on MKB. Some fun stuff happening here. Tenbu doing quite a lot of damage. There's the blink forward. Down to the side as always once again. TP out by ZX and he does get out! Wow, BKB barely making out in time. Has the DD. Ice Blast was almost there in time, but not quite. Well played by the Brood. They're going to take out this Roche while they can. Where's the shard? I want to see a shard. I don't... Oh, Lishrak has a shard. There you go. See him? See him? See? He, he sun once and then it just keeps coming back. See? It did it again. You look at this ring right here. Okay, we'll watch it. There, see? It did it again. He didn't cast it. It just, it just did it again. See? Look how big it is. It gets bigger and bigger each time. That's so cool. I'm so proud of you. That's the fun one. Any more? There we go. We got the shard on the warlock. Very important. This shard is pretty pointless. This shard is... Well, this shard would be kind of nice. Oh, but the cooldown is 12 seconds. Well, that's less cool. So, targeted spell, targeted spell, Targeted spell, targeted spell. So, four heroes with targeted spells. It might be worth something. Dubu Polar Bear is just kind of walking out, just cuz. Titan Slipper. Oh. AZ has BKB, has the Kaya working on hopefully a Bloodstone. Seems like we have mana problems, but who knows. Necrophos has the Eternal Shroud, and the Greaves, and the Pipe. This is about as tanky as you can expect Necro to get before a Shiva or something. Fear Breaker also has a Hood. They're just going to have Uber, Matic Resistance. Hoodwink, God Boots of Travel. Okay, that's that's something. Yeah, I guess she's been, she's been the person split pushing, keeping the waves pushed in, because she has Scurry to help her be super evasive to help her stay out of out of sight. Makes sense. Brood got the Mage Slayer. Whoa. Okay. I really I honestly haven't seen that in Oh, Arena goes down and Sai Moom with the Glimmer Cape gets speared to the wall, but that that's about it. Oh no. Brood is caught out. Ice Blast connects onto Spirit Breaker. Sharpshooter whiffs on a no one. BKB popped by Fred. Who are they going on? Golem hits on to two. Brood is so cute with the BKB. The Shrek has the Aegis though. AZ has popped BKB as well. There's the so many so many stunts coming out. 
Fire Blast three time onto Warlock. So many things are happening. Reaper Scythe onto AZ. Vino has bought back. The AA has bought back. Down goes to be Polar Bear. Golem is doing a lot of damage. AZ is back in the fight. With more stuns, down goes Fred as well. 10 times streak ended by Fred. 10 moves here. Acorn's bouncing around like crazy. They gotta be careful. Please crack your TP's out of there. That was such a disorganized fight. The golem hit onto two people. The, the arena hit onto no one except the Ogre Magi all by himself, really far away. Yeah. About what you would expect. Since this time. Oh, charge onto AC. This time AZ's here. Oh, but getting totally wrecked. You will get out of things, but gotta be super careful. Does have the ring though? Vino is gonna get in a lot of trouble. Glimmer keeps. Gets the stun out. Glimmer keep once again onto more rice. Everyone is trying really hard. They want to get a quick follow up kill, but now they're backing off very wisely. Yep. It should be fine. Ten moves all the way down on the low ground. Has satanic though. It's gonna be big. Now we need some damage. Mage Slayer. So th this makes sense up against AZ, for sure. Makes a lot of sense. Because AZ is only magic damage. I, I honestly haven't seen it in forever. I'm not sure where it fits into the meta. I don't, I don't know how impactful it is. It seems like it gives a decent amount of stats. A decent amount of, like, just buffs. As far as you get agile, you get damage, you get magic resistance. I don't know. You're using a whole slot for that. And is it, is it really that much? Let's see. Um, 3250. Yeah. Oh, they're going on Bleach Cracker. They really want her. They really want... Oh, do they really want her? They do. Fred's, Fred's, Fred's going in. Yeah, though, you can see Arena down there. Splattered her out. There's the Spirit of the Wall. Aeon Disc has been popped by Bleach Cracker. There's the Yules. AZ with the stun. It lands perfectly and... Down goes Bleach Tracker. Finally, three times streak ended. She has been the bane of their existence as far as split pushing goes. Very, very nice. Arena has been used, but it's a short cooldown. They can take down this tower once the creeps catch up. They still have Ice Blast. They do they have Golem? They do have Golem. And they have Stone Gates. Those are really big, and Arena should be up very shortly. So it should be perfect. Time to start pushing again. Here's Fred being super aggressive. There we go. It just keep the split earth. See, look, let's watch it. Let's watch it. See the little spinny thing? It's a little bit bigger circle. And bam. And then spinny thing, a little bit bigger circle. And bam. It's so cool. I thought it was so fun and then so useless, but like I just I really wanted it. Wait, is it four times? Did they change it? Oh, it's four times total. It's three additional times. Originally, it was just two more times. So this is legit. It gets so big. Look, now you just kind of like, you just chain them together. I love it. And then one more time. One more time. Bam. Oh, that was so cool. Down goes bottom lane of racks. See, I, oh, and, oh, one more. And, and one more, and one more is going to get him. Yeah, it gets him. Oh, oh God. And it seems like it's a, bit, it's a bit more subtle now when there's when there's like a bunch of other stuff here with the, with the spider webs. You can't see the lines as much. In certain places, it's like super obvious where they are. When it'd be like here, you can see the black lines very clearly. But with spider webs everywhere, it's very disruptive. I can't really see the circles as clearly as usual. AZ is going for Shiva's now. Necro is going for. Okay, Sanjin Kaya. Heard that status resistance and magic buff. Ochre working on solar crest. Spirit breaker has spirit vessel working on another pipe. Okay. Hoodwink got the aether lens working on Yules and gonna get the shard, which is pretty cool. A decoy. I like it. Because you can, you can move the decoy, I think. Radiant At first, I, I haven't used it yet, attacked. but I, I thought the thing with that was like, it wasn't actually, it wouldn't move. You would just send it there and it would like automatically do stuff or just stand there. Top tower 
But I, I watched someone play it on a clip and they, they controlled it. So that makes it way more better. You get to freely spawn an illusion. That's awesome, right? I suppose we'll see if she ever gets it. Who got the illusion? Illusion escape. Warlock has the Paladin sword. <laughs> That's legit. Close track. Going for the Shivas, as we said. Tembu has the Daedalus finished up. We've got some damage now, finally. Fred has... Oh, almost has AC. We should be giving... We should be giving Tembu that. I mean, I mean, he being Fred that. Fred needs to finish the AC. That's going to be very helpful in general. AA is taking down Alpos all by Lonesome. Very cool. Okay, okay. I want to see something fun. Y'all are kind of just chilling. Oh, Roche. Roche will respawn in 30 seconds. 30 seconds, y'all, but no one's really paying attention. Dire snow fortified their structures. ZX. Oh, ZX has Scepter, which gives you the webs. Okay, what is it? So now it increases by 54%. Oh, 80%. But it doesn't, it doesn't change your max move speed, so now you just get the haste. It should be way faster. But no, oh god, you attack quickly. What the heck? What was that? Wait, attack again. Attack again. Oh, leveler. I was like, what in the world was that? Leveler. Leveler is super fast. Neutral items. Trickster cloak, that's good. Make you invis. Gives you evasion and stuff. Oh, that's good. Timeless relic. Debuff stuff. Leveler for attack speed. Cooldown reduction. Fast resistance and damage. Magic community, even more magic community. <laughs> Level one, fairy's trinket, always the best. There you go. That's the way to do it. And then paladin sword on warlock. They must not have very good neutral items. Psychic headband. Why not psychic headband or spider legs? On you. On you. Have it on you. That make it would make so much sense. Whatever. It's okay. They're taking down Roche. Poor little Roche. So many big stuns coming in. Here's the big circle. Bam! Oh. Oh, it's just so satisfying. Just, just so satisfying. Every time. And it, it's so predictable. Because it's, it's exactly five seconds and you can like see it coming up. So, so you know it's happening. It's, it's immensely gratifying. So, something about it. I'll try not to get too excited. I, I apologize if I'm making you uncomfortable. But it is, it is, it's just, it, it hits a part of me, it, I don't know, it, it, it just, it's, it's right there, it is, it is so right, it's so right. Code 5 has Roche now. I didn't even see who picked it up, AZ picked it up. Of course, the damage dealer. We've got Cheese on Medusa, Tenbu needs that, now we've got Satanic and the Cheese. Make you tanky, make you lifesteal like crazy. AZ, yeah, it's done, just keep him on there. And then time it in between, so you get one every 2.5 seconds. Okay? Okay. Come on, do it again. Oh, now they're not going to be timed very fun. Do, do. Bam, bam. Okay, one more time. Do it again. Do it again. Oh, they're going on, to, on AZ. He can be popped by ZX. Then backs out like it wants, because what are they going to do? Down goes the first Rax. Second one's gonna be put to follow being forward with the arena, but gets stunned instantly. Four times pops the BKB finally. Ice Blast comes in. Poor Simon. Spear to the face and down goes Simon once again. BKB has been popped by Icarus. And it's already over. And more rice has gone in really far and just dies in the back lines. So many things going everywhere. Golem hits on to two. Oh my gosh, this is so chaotic. Icarus is gonna go down probably really soon. ZX is so fast, gets out of there just in time. Icarus about to go down. The spear is burning so much, but no, he's super tanky. Ghost Rider is keeping him alive, but he does eventually go down. Tenbu is so tanky. He has taken up everything with the Shadow Word, with the Mana Shield. He is unstoppable. Three heroes go down. Please Cracker has to be super careful. Scurrying out of there, but there's a spear. 
does not connect though. She's okay, Ice Blast comes in and Beast Cracker gets hit. Can they finish her off? GG has been called. Come on, Fred, put the thing in there. Oh, she's gonna be fine. GG has been called. Can they finish off the racks in time? They can. They do. Oh, maybe they didn't even accept it. And then one more giant thing. Bam. Oh, so satisfying. And that was like as big as the ancient too. GG Goat 5 wins game number two. Congrats to them. Congrats to Fred and Vino and Tenbu and Doobie Polar Bear and... Um, oh, and AZ. Sorry, sorry, Tenbu, for, for talking about you so much. You just kept dying, and I, and I, 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 whenever I see these patterns, I like to call out the patterns. But you all played super awesome. Congrats to Lost Generation for getting this far. They're, they're out of the playoffs now with this loss. So that means they, they're out, yeah, they're out of the playoffs. And GOAT5 will continue on to play next week in the lower bracket. They will be playing, let's see, who will they play? They'll play whoever wins the, oh, they'll play the loser of something. I don't know who does what. I think they'll play the loser of WSS Cobals and Illegal. Who are, they're in the, they're in the top upper bracket. Yeah. Cool, cool. Well, thank you everyone. And that's all we've got. Thanks for watching. Congrats to GOAT5. I will be back online tomorrow, most likely. Casting Pot of Envy. So be sure to tune in tomorrow at like 7 CST. And then again on Sunday, we'll see if my voice can take it. I have to do the one on Sunday, but I also kind of have to do tomorrow. But we'll see how it goes. Tomorrow's Friday though, it should be fun. Hope everyone has a good Thursday. Hope you had fun. And, and good night. Yep, later.